Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're going to be showing you the brand new Sager MP9370. If you're looking for the ultimate in gaming performance, this laptop has the honor of being the world's very first 17 inch laptop that supports both Crossfire and SLI. That means you have your option of getting two of Nvidia's top GPUs or two of AMD's GPUs and having them inside the system running in tandem. The unit is being released with the Nvidia GTX 680 mobile but will later on in October be available with the AMD 7970s. Let's go ahead and start taking a tour of the unit. We'll start over here by the palm rest and keyboard area. As you can see, staying true to Sager's standards, usually the units are very minimalistic and not too flashy. You will see that we have a branded speaker system from Onkyo, and we have a standard chiclet style keyboard that is LED backlit. In the center, just below the monitor bezel, you're going to find your status LEDs for your caps lock and hard drive accessing and such. To the far right, you have your power button. And here is a look at the software that you can configure the keyboard LED backlighting with. It is split into three zones, and you can obviously change the colors to anything you would like. Moving over to the bottom right hand side of the palm rest area, you will see a small embedded fingerprint reader. As for the palm rest area itself, it's actually coated in a rubber finish. So this is going to make it pleasant to the touch, and when you're resting your hands on the laptop, it's going to have some added comfort for you. The touchpad is textured and one single surface. The left and right clicks are recessed inside of the touchpad itself. Now as we back up a bit, Here's a good glance of what the unit would look like in normal operation status. Now we're going to go ahead and go on the outside edges of the laptop and show you all the interfaces. In the very front side on the right, you're going to have some more status LEDs, the ones for such as charging your battery and your Wi-Fi. On the right hand side in the front, this is where you're going to find your optical drive. It does have a dedicated eject button. Next to that we have an eSATA and USB combo port, followed by three more USB 3.0 ports. As we swing around to the back side, the first thing you'll see is one of the large exhaust vents. This is good for the GPU exhaust, followed by the HDMI output. This is HDMI 1.4 with HDCP. Then you have a much more rare display port output in the center, this is your DC input where you can hook up your power brick to the laptop. Next to that, a smaller exhaust, another USB 3.0 port, and then one more very large exhaust for the other GPU. The LCD lid is covered in the same rubberized finish that the palm rest area is. This makes it have a professional finish, and also when you're handling the laptop closed, like putting it in and out of your bag, it makes it easier to handle. And finally, as we get around to the left side, in the rear you have your Kingston lock port, followed by your RJ45 Ethernet connection for your internet, a multi-card reader, you have a line in, an SPDIF output, a microphone input, and a headphone output as far as audio. So you have four audio jacks. Once you close the LCD lid, go ahead and give it a spin. This gives you a good idea of what to expect as far as the size and proportions of the laptop. Now it's time for us to move into some of the benchmarking for the system. This is obviously the segment that's going to be the most important to a lot of people looking for a system like this. We have two of the highest GPUs available from NVIDIA in here, and again it will be configurable with the AMD GPUs later on. This is our physics setup, and you can see that we have the dual display adapters. One feature about this laptop that enthusiasts will definitely enjoy is the fact that it uses its own special GPUs. 
They do not come with Optimus or Enduro, so there are no integrated GPUs to accidentally kick on and ruin your gaming experience. So no more driver problems and no more incompatibility issues with your games. Your dedicated graphics will be running all the time. Okay, now we started some of our actual benchmarking. What we have here is an external infrared thermometer and we're checking the surface temperatures of the laptop. What we're looking for is any heat leaks or any spots on the laptop that would be hotter than they should be and that would cause it to be uncomfortable to the touch. The main areas of interest are going to be the touchpad and the palm rest because that's where your hands are going to be resting. As you can see, all the temperatures are actually staying right where they should be. This system has such a strong dedicated cooling system that all the heat's coming out of the back and not escaping through your keyboard and palm rest. Okay, talking about the dedicated cooling system, here we are on the back of the system and now you can see the differences in the temperatures. You'll notice that they're much higher and this is actually a good thing. That means that the system is properly taking all the heat that's being produced inside and forcing it to evacuate out of the back through the exhaust. Remember that we're running some very high-end hardware, two of NVIDIA's highest GPUs, so this is going to be a lot of heat produced inside and the system is doing a very good job of making sure it takes care of all that heat and gets it out of the system. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the benchmark is done and the results are in. This is 3D Mark Vantage, and on a laptop, we got a performance score of 29,548. If you've run this benchmark before or you're familiar with the scores, you know exactly how high that is, and know that that score actually probably stomps a lot of people's even their gaming desktop machines. So for a laptop, that's phenomenal. As far as the temperatures, while we were running that benchmark, you can see that all the temperatures stayed in a very nice place. The system did a really great job of handling all the cooling necessary and the temperature stayed in a very comfortable place. And now for some more performance numbers for you, here is 3D Mark 11, the newest and hardest one. The system got a performance score of 9,564. Again, this is a really awesome score, and if you want to know how to compare this score, you'd have to run the same benchmark on your other machines. Okay, now it's time for some more benchmarking. This time, however, we're not testing for performance, we're testing the cooling system. What we have here is Firmark 1.9.2. This is known as the GPU killing benchmark. It is well known to cause the highest heat levels in GPUs and can even often damage or destroy them because of the intensive load. It's been running for more than 11 minutes now and you can see that the highest temperature we got on one of the GPUs is 91 degrees Celsius, which is still within a safe level currently at 89 degrees Celsius, and then down below the other GPU is running cooler than that one. It only hit a maximum load of 77 degrees Celsius. And while that is still running, we're going to go back to the surface temperature test with the infrared thermometer. As you can see, the temperatures are now accordingly higher, but keep in mind this is a not a realistic operating environment right now. We're running the most intensive benchmark possible, maxing out both of the GPUs. Still though, the palm rest and touchpad areas where your hands would be are in a comfortable temperature level. And once again, we're going to go ahead and go back to the exhaust. Okay, and now Farmark has completed the burn-in. If you'd like to know the results, we've got 2,608 points. It's telling us the maximum of 77 degrees Celsius because it was reading GPU number 1. Alright guys, now we're moving on to the end of this showcase. First, take notice of the power brick. Obviously, this actually earns the name power brick. Look how large it is. It is the size of a brick. 
is a full 300 watts and it's necessary to have that much power because there's so much hardware in the system. Also, make sure you know that the speaker system has a dedicated subwoofer underneath of the laptop. This is going to help give you a nice, full, robust sound when operating the system, listening to music, and playing games. As we disassemble the system a little bit further, you can see what's inside. Over on this side is where we're going to have your optical drive. It's easy to access and replace. To the other side is a dual hard drive bay. This is where we're going to have your 2.5 inch hard drives. Obviously, they can be a mechanical drive or solid state disk. A little bit further up here is one of the main heat seeks for the GPU on that side of the system, connected to its own dedicated cooling fan. You'll see two of your RAM slots, a smaller fan in the middle. Here's your combo Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card, the subwoofer we spoke of earlier. The other GPU cooling fan connected to its own heat sink as well. So you can see there's a lot of heat sinks, a lot of heat pipes, and a lot of fans on the system. So it is actually very much built just for being a performance machine. Glancing at the bay door that covers everything, you'll see that all the air vents are appropriately placed right where the fans are and the exhaust is so the air can get in and out of the system easily. And that, everybody, is going to be concluding our showcase of the Sager NP9370. If you'd like to learn more about the system, such as the current pricing and availability, we have all that available for you on our website, gentechpc.com. There's multiple ways to get a hold of us. If you have any extra questions you need help with, such as our forums, phone, or email, so feel free to contact us if you need any additional help. So once again, this was Gentech PC. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.